everyone. And welcome back to the light side of the paranormal. I'm Alex. And I'm Jenna. And welcome to a new series on our channel for the whole month of November that we are calling Claire Vember. So for each week in November, we will be going over all four psychic abilities that are called the Claire's. So the Claire's are clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience, and clairaudience. There are more than four clairs, but these are the main most common psychic abilities. So for each week, we will be touching on each one of these psychic gifts. Not everyone has all four of these abilities within themselves. Most of the time, um, people will connect with one or two more than all of them. So don't get discouraged if not all of these abilities resonate with you. So join us through this month of Claire Vember to find out if you have any of the main four psychic abilities. So please enjoy this week's Claire. So this week we'll be talking about Claire Sentience, which is clear sensing or clear feeling. This is also known as psychic feeling or psychic sensing. Claire Sentience is a form of empathy. So um, most people that are empaths, and we can go over that in another video, but most people, if you know that you're an empath, you probably experience a lot of clairsentience. It is the ability to intuitively feel through physical and emotional stimulation and sensation. People who have clairsentience are known to be very, very talented healers. And they just have a natural want to help others in all different ways. So signs that you might be clairsentient are as follows. If you find it hard watching the news. A lot of people who are clairsentient find it hard to watch the news, hard to see um, other people's suffering. Also find it hard to watch just human or animal suffering on TV or in movies, even if they're fake, like even if they're Hollywood fictional movies, hard to watch people getting hurt or animals getting hurt. If you're someone that goes to a place and you can like feel the vibes of the place, like you'll often find yourself saying things like, oh, I, I really don't like the vibe in here. Like, I think I need to leave. Or, oh, I love the, the feeling here. I love the vibe here. It's so light, it's so happy. You know, like you may not know um, what's necessarily going on and why it feels like that, but you can definitely feel a difference. Um, am I explaining that properly? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can feel out a room when you walk in. Exactly. So hand in hand with being able to feel out a room when you walk in, uh, people who are clairsentient can, even if they don't know what it is that they're feeling or why they're feeling it, um, can pick up on if there are spirits in a house, like if a house is haunted, or if they're at a, um, a, a location that has a lot of spiritual activity, they get this feeling, they might not know how to associate that feeling or to place it, like what it really means, but they can feel that something is off and that there is some form of energy that isn't normal, mm -hmm. or maybe not normal, just not common, if that makes sense. That makes sense. I don't want to be like, haunted thing. You feel that there's a haunted thing? <laughs> but if it, yeah. An example would be like, say that um, someone may have taken their own life in a home. You may walk into that home and it just feels really sad and really depressed and really cold. Yeah, that would be an example of that. Another example, when I was a kid, uh, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what was going on, but I would get the overwhelming feelings of like claustrophobia um, like and I described it as a feeling like there was suddenly something in my personal space that I didn't like and I didn't mm -hmm. know what it was and I used to just run outside and go be outside for a little bit but that was the feeling of what was going on in my house I couldn't place it I didn't know what it was but it was this overwhelming feeling of something I couldn't quite figure out at the time that's but, yeah. a perfect example you may get a case of the spiritual tingles or spiritual goosebumps and what that is is like you get sensations of 
cold and you get goosebumps or warm and you get goosebumps. Um, sometimes if you may be doing a paranormal investigation and um, someone or something comes really nice and close to you, you get those tingles. Yeah, spiritual tingles. Also, it's like getting tingles or goosebumps for not the normal reasons of like being cold. Mm -hmm. So also if you do um, tarot or card readings or if you uh, say something psychically to somebody else, you can get these tingles because you know you're right mm -hmm. or because some other being is, is showing you you're right. Mm -hmm. So you can get spiritual tingles um, not only with clairsentience, but just with, with any of the clairs, really. Yeah. I don't think that it only is specific to clairsentience, yeah. as you explained. Yeah. yeah. I think it's probably more associated because it's like a feel, like a touchy-feely kind of thing. So That's they, true. Yeah. And then again, with the touch mm -hmm. and stuff, another sign is when you feel like you've been touched um, or you get touched by uh, spirits, angels, whatever it may be, um, but you are feeling a hand or feeling like you're being touched when there's nobody there. That's something that Jenna experiences a lot, especially when we're doing paranormal investigations. I find everyone just wants to touch Jenna. <laughs> it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen like a crazy amount, but I guess it would be like a lot for somebody who has never had that happen. Yeah, like I, I would consider clairsentience to be one of my strongest clairs. But the actual physical touch is not something that I experience very it's often. It's more like emotional touch. Exactly. Yeah. Or sorry, what the f did I just <laughs> say? It's more like emotional feelings. Yeah, like instead of like feelings. Like emo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Emotional touch. No, I. I know I've been touched emotionally. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like I get you. <laughs> so touching on empaths um, and how they kind of tie into clairsentience so much. We're gonna constantly be bringing up empaths in this, but you can get a sense of what someone's like before actually getting to know them. Say, like, I always tell myself, I give myself five to ten minutes upon meeting a person and I can decide if I feel like I would jive really well with them or not. Just, you can feel them out. Yeah. Really easily. Really clearly, really easily, you will know for sure. It's like, mm, yeah, I'm not working. Or like, yes, let's be friends, you know? So another thing, um, people with clear sentience are really good at being like a human lie detector. I am so good at this and it's like my like superpower. Like it's one thing that I am really proud of. <laughs> like I know and it's so, it, it can be really frustrating but it's funny sometimes my husband and my kids don't get away with anything but knowing when someone is lying to you and you're mm -hmm. like I know you're lying and you can feel it but you're still like you're still lying like I said like okay well like I try, try and feel them out like it's so funny that it's like somebody saying telling you a lie while they have liar written on their forehead mm -hmm. like it's funny and it's not so much like like you're getting like a vision of the truth it's more like you can feel yeah it's like a tangible shift. energy in, in between you and you just know yeah like that is a lie yeah <laughs> yeah like you're just handing me fluff like, yeah <laughs> Oh my god, the way my arms are right now, it looks like someone's behind me. Oh! <laughs> doing my arms. Like, yeah, when you like do this. What thing. the? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have clairsentience, you'll probably catch yourself often saying, I feel, or I'm feeling, or if you're, say, for example, performing tarot for someone, or oracle for someone. Performing. But, I don't know. I like. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> To me, that's what it is. When it popped up in my head, performing tarot. Sorry. The visual you know, I got like, was just really funny. It's like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like just like when, when you're doing it, like when when you're when you're reading somebody. Yeah. And I don't know. Or you might be like, I feel like you're lying, not like I know you're lying. Exactly. Even though I know you're lying. <laughs> you might be like, I feel like you're lying. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you might not be telling me the truth right now. Yes. Say you're you're looking at your cards and you're going, I feel like you might be um, arguing a liar. with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> a liar. <laughs> arguing with your mother right now, and you should probably, you know, not do that. Or, you know, like I feel like I feel like I'm doing this. I feel like, you know, you're doing that. 
Am I explaining this weird? I mean, say fuel five more times then. I know, because I'm just like kind of tired today and just saying. You may find yourself really impacted by the moon or the planets, like Mer Mercury retrograde. Um, the Which is just killing us right I know, <laughs> yeah, like it is awful. Um, <laughs> Y'all can relate, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you've made it here, you probably can relate. So I know for myself, like even just the phases of the moon, like whatever the moon's doing, I am 100% affected by that. Um, I'll find myself like, say for example, like being like really, really uplifted and then start going like kind of like a little bit more um, hermity is what I call it. <laughs> or, like I just yeah. don't really want to do anything and I just kind of want to stay in the house. Then I look on the moon app and I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And you know how um, we charge our crystals in the moon? The, the moonlight, I should say. Um, I feel like I charge me in the moonlight. Like yeah. if, if I'm outside and it's nice and dark and there's just this beautiful full moon above me, like I just I'm feel- so happy. Yes, like my soul is just completely re recharging, refreshing, rejuvenating. And the other thing too is that like the, the full moon is, I mean, it's happened every month your entire life and I still get so excited to see the moon yes. not just when it's full whenever I see the moon I just get so excited yes yes like pull over the car and get out yeah when yeah. you see it, it's really close like, yeah oh I love, love it. it another trait associated with clairsentience is when you get gut feelings and you make decisions based on whether or not they feel right or wrong I think a lot of people have clairsentience to a, to a degree. This is probably one of the psychic senses that a lot of people have, if not everybody. So you could say that this would be the easiest one for most of you to grow and to work on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, having gut feelings, and that goes hand in hand with your intuition too, but mm -hmm. doing things based on what feels better or what feels right. Another sign would be that you're maybe a bit of a history buff. You might find history extremely interesting or intriguing and that is because you can actually I mean it could also be very upsetting depending what part of history you're looking at but you can feel what was going on at that time um, you could be say at a museum and you're going from piece to piece and just by looking at that photo for example or that painting you're brought back to that time and and that could be very exciting for you um, just because of how that makes you feel in a really deep, intense way. So something else that is pretty big when it comes to like being an empath as well is um, taking on other people's emotions. So you could be in a really great state of mind and happy and stuff and then the person you're going to hang out with is a real downer, mm -hmm. or at least a real downer that day and your mood switches immediately and you're down and dumps and you spend the rest of your day feeling down and crappy when you didn't start that way, you just, you know, picked up or mirrored that person's energy. Yeah, like energy matching. Yeah. I know for myself, like, I find it really hard to be at certain social events because of that. Like, it could work for or against you, depending on the environment. I know um, if I go to say like a concert and like everyone's like really excited, everyone's really wanting to see the band, like I'm like so ready and I'm so pumped up. But then say I go to um, a party where there's obviously all sorts of different personalities, all sorts of different humans going through different things, um, and someone comes into the room that is not someone that I think that I would like vibe with per se or maybe they're going through something like a tough time and they're really projecting that and like really feeling that, I feel like it eats me alive. Yeah. <laughs> like I need to like leave. Like you can't focus on the rest of your day. No, that? completely yeah. distracted by this, this overwhelming sense of whatever they were putting out there. Do you find that you have certain people in your life that you, like you, you can't control it. You can't control who you energy match with. No. But some people you do and some people you don't? Mm, I would say that I pretty much do with everybody, but there are people that I do more right. or more often or even like more intensely. Right. But for the most part, I would say like most people in my life, yeah.
How about you? I, uh, there's definitely been, I can go throughout my day with, you know, for the most part, whatever. But there have been people in my life where I'm going, uh, I'm hanging out with friends and this one person, no matter, if, if they're not feeling up, I might as well just go home because the rest wow. of my night is shot. So certain people really affect you. Yeah, like more if that others. one person is happy and feeling good, then I'm happy and feeling good. And I can't control who it is. Um, I wonder if it's because some people and that it's been misinterpreted project more than others, right? Yeah, like, maybe. Like maybe some people can just like be distracted and brush off however they're feeling, right. whereas other people are Project like their feelings. really drowning in that yeah. within themselves and therefore it's just like oozing out of them and yeah. you're just like... But I found <laughs> it <laughs> to be, I found it to be like easily misinterpreted, like well why do you care so much about what that person thinks? Or oh. why do you care? Why can't you have a good time if they're not having a good time? Right. Like misinterpreting feelings and stuff like that when really like I don't care but now my night is ruined just because I can't stop feeling the feelings, you know? I understand what you're right. saying now. And yes, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. For sure. So when decorating your home, you may place furniture in a way that just feels right or feels good to you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving furniture around is like, I frigging love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Only if it's done the right way. Yeah, like I would love to go in, I go into rooms and I'm like, well, if I could only like, <laughs> I'm talking about not at my house, because I do that at my house. Yeah. But it's like somebody else's house, you'd be like, ooh, it would feel so much better if this was over here and that was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really and stupid. like, I feel like this part of clairsentience also ties into like some like, OCD problem. <laughs> I was right about to say like some forms of OCD, because I know for myself, like I do have like mild OCD, like diagnosed. Um, and yeah, like it's totally a thing, like to the point that like if, if, if something is placed improperly or in a way that doesn't feel right to me, it will actually so bother me. Like, yes. Like, and I'll just like yeah. stare at it and like I just need <laughs> to move it. Like if I go to a restaurant, for example, this is like- Or my house. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> or your house. This needs to be not like this. Yeah. <laughs> you do whatever you gotta do to make you happy. <laughs> as long as you're not moving my couch around. I'm like, I just need to move the salt and pepper here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. You At know. the table. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I know, I know, like to some of you, you're probably like, that's really nuts. But it's just, it's a thing. So yeah. this does tie into clairsentience. Um, you will feel in an intense way if the room feels right based on where the things are placed. Now this can tie into feng shui and something that's very interesting about feng shui is that people who experience this form of clairsentience may not know about feng shui and they just like place their room a certain way because it feels right and then go ahead and like look up what feng shui is and like how according to that the room may be placed and, and you, it's exactly yeah, following And you did it. the right thing. Yeah. Of, yeah. It's because you can feel the energy flow and it just feels better that way. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that circulates on where I put my Christmas tree. I'm like, oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm obsessed with Christmas. But yes, where my Christmas tree is, it is like a big deal. That's interesting. I've never it's had such a, a big Christmas piece of tree. Furniture. What? Except. <laughs> okay, I should clarify that Halloween was your month, but Christmas is mine! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you never had a Christmas tree! I've never had my own Christmas tree. Um, not even like a little apartment one. I'm like mad now. I know, I'm sorry. Like, because we spend Christmas at our parents' place. And yes, but you need to have a tree to like get you in the Christmas spirit for the whole six weeks leading up to Christmas. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not as into Christmas, because I don't really decorate my oh. house for Christmas. We don't have a Christmas tree. I know. <laughs> Well, I like store gifts there and like wrap gifts there, but that's about it. Yeah, and my house looks like I vomited Christmas <laughs> all over Christmas. the house. Yes. <laughs> okay, another one would be feeling somebody's energy. You could, some people see their energy as a color, but you might feel it, but you would you might also feel what color it is. Mm hmm. Yeah, like I, I have done that before where I'm like, I feel like you've got a lot of purple around you. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like a fellow. A fellow psychic. <laughs> and they were like, oh, 
funny thing. <laughs> I am purple. <laughs> so I was right. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah, I've, I've never experienced that myself, but I find that really, really cool. So you've made it to the last part of this video, which is most people's favorite, and that is exercises to strengthen your clairsentience. So we're gonna, we said this before, and we're gonna keep saying it, meditate. You need to make time for meditation. One of the easiest ways of practicing clairsentience is um, trying to strengthen your sense of empathy, trying to put yourself in other people's shoes, trying to like say that in an unfortunate case where a friend of yours is going through some hard stuff. like. Just try and really feel the way that they're feeling in that moment, just as an example. Yeah, just try and practice. Empathy. Yeah, there's a difference between trying to feel what they're feeling mm -hmm. or how you would feel if you were in that situation and sympathizing for them. Yes, yes. Sy sympathy is just like, I feel bad for you. I'm sorry for you mm -hmm. rather than, oh my gosh, I can feel it. And, and you know yeah like it's if I were different. in this position oh, I would feel terrible and you kind of start to feel the way that they would feel mm -hmm. rather than just glossing over and be like wow that's awesome. yeah <laughs> I mean be a little bit more sympathetic yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow oh, that, that sucks <laughs> and then the next step so after you practice that first step for a little while the next kind of more evolved step would be trying to sense how someone's feeling before they even tell you what they're going through. Try and sense what someone's putting out without them explaining prior, hey, um, this thing happened and now I'm feeling like this. And then you'd have to look for that, right? Whereas you don't want to have that hint. You just want to be able to try and feel them out. And this could happen in like the weirdest places, at the grocery store, for example. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> you run into people? Where like, I'll just like be walking past someone like with my little cart and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I should probably tell them that like, you know, I'm really sorry for their loss or something like that. And, like I've never met this person from a hole in the ground, yeah. but I'm just like, oh my gosh. I can't yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. You know, so that kind of thing. like. And it, it could be with strangers, but typically when you're practicing and when you're exercising like this, it's good to do with friends because not all people take are things okay the right way. With that. Yeah. yeah. If you happen to be in a situation, I know a lot of people are not okay with that though. Um, mm -hmm. Being in a situation where you know that, you, that where you are is a, a known haunted location. A lot of people enjoy going to places that they know are haunted and see what they feel, see what they pick up, see what happens. Some people are not okay with that. So mm -hmm. if you're okay with that, try and feel out um, what is going on there, what happened, the feelings associated with why this place might be haunted. You could also do this, aside from like the haunted thing, so if you go to a museum or something that has items from the war or something from, you know, different time, different time eras and stuff, you can kind of feel out the feelings associated with those items or the feelings you're getting around there because you can get validation from a museum director like you can always check with them and be like oh like do a lot of people feel you know weird about this item here or something or uh, you know and, and right. see if you're right and yeah or you could even say like what what exactly like went on with this piece like, yeah you don't have to let more. on you don't have to let on that you're trying to do this you yeah. can say yeah, I want some more information about this, can you tell me? And then see if, you know, the feelings you were getting jive with, with the story behind the item. That would actually be a really great way to practice where you're not having to necessarily interact with, like, people or, like, maybe even if, like, you don't have to worry about offending anybody. It's just, like, yeah. a completely, um, how do you say that? Just items. Like, it's just... Yeah. It's non-emotional non for the other party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just say it We're basically. Being crazy because it's a full moon. That must be exactly why. It's tonight. It all makes sense. I'm gonna just say it basically and stop thinking about it. Okay. Say it basically. Basically. <laughs> Something else to try would be to, like, say that you're spending time with someone, like your mom or grandma or something, and try and feel if they have any sort of, like, physical pain anywhere. And what I mean by that is, like, say you're hanging out with your grandma. And you're like, 
Grandma, like, I feel like your knees are sore today. How are your knees doing? And she's like, yeah, they're super sore. But the difference is, yes, an emotional, like, gut feeling, yes, but you may be able to actually feel it in your own knee, as an example. Like, try and see if you can strengthen this ability to the point that you can feel other people's pain. Obviously not like in a, in a way that could injure you, but you know, just, just like that, like if, if you're hanging out with someone. And if you know them, it's, it's again a, a safe place to, to say something like that. You don't have to be like, I'm practicing clairsentience. Yeah, no. And no, like you can just be, you can just be like, or, or if you don't even want to be that specific, be like, are you in pain today? And see if where they say they're in pain, if they're right. Or I mean, if, you're if you right. were right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they might be like, no, and then you'd be like, oh, okay. Like, you don't have to disclose to anybody what, what you're doing up here. <laughs> These exercises are for you. They're for, for you to do and for you to know about. And unless you want to share that with other people, you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to let everyone in on it. These are just exercises for you to do. And the last exercise, um, practice holding items, not of your own. <laughs> um, and see if you can kind of, you know, take a few deep breaths. You kind of, before doing any of these, you kind of probably want to take a few deep breaths. Just kind of center yourself, be in the moment, get all the other stuff out of your head before you do any of these. So you can kind of, you know, have better focus on what you're dealing with. So you hold an item and, and try and see if, if you can feel what that item has been through. Um, you know, like hold, a friend's ring or something be like let's see if I can pick up anything while I'm holding this ring and maybe you'd feel sad or something and then you could be like I feel, I'm feeling like you, you know a lot of sadness around this item and, and they might be like oh yeah I got it because my grandma died or something you know mm -hmm. feel items and see if you can pick up things this is also really good to do again if you're at a museum and there's items you can touch yes touch something see what you feel take a few deep breaths before you read the plaque or whatever and then see if it's the same again like all of these ideas are good to practice but just try and do it more than one time you know like you don't want to like okay check that one off the list yeah, no no this is something you got you have to you know work at practice because it won't just be all of a sudden tomorrow you're like oh there now my color sentient little light switches on mm -hmm. it's it's like a muscle you have to work it for it to show up exactly thank you so much for watching our video and please give this video a big like if you learned something if you like our ridiculous banter and <laughs> just our very light-sided approach to all of this <laughs> stuff and make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you like this kind of content, if you like our content, and make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you get notified every single time that we upload. And stay tuned for next week for our next Claire. And don't forget to, to live, live your life, life with love and, and light. light. We'll see you guys.